Hey guys, it's Josh Ellsworth with Stalls TV, and I want to thank you so much for tuning into our channel. The content you are about to watch was produced in January 2021 as part of our Heat Press for Profit virtual event. It got rave reviews, and I know you're going to love it. This is called our Show and Sell series, where we walk through some of the hottest trends in blank apparel and teach you how to print them. Good afternoon, everybody. I am so excited for you to join us this afternoon for our Show and Sell Trend Series Bags, a wonderful collaboration that we have with S&S, &S, and we have stuff in here today with us that's going to be highlighting um, some bags and some trends that we're going to talk about. A few housekeeping things I'm going to cover while we're waiting for people to filter in. First and foremost, um, some questions that come up pretty much at every session. All of these are being recorded, um, so if you miss them or you have to pop in and out of different sessions, they will be here for you to come back and reference. If you look in your um, virtual trade show application on the session, there's a chat box, there's a poll box, and there's file box, uh, file box also. In the file tab, if you tab on that, there is a downloadable PowerPoint presentation that will have all of our slides in it that you can reference and some handy dandy tools that I've also put in there for you. Um, PDFs and things like that that will help. We'll reference a few of those as we go throughout. Um, in addition, please utilize the chat box to ask us any questions that you have throughout the presentation. We have Stacy moderating for us today and she will um, at various times um, interrupt us or feed us some questions so that we can answer them for the group. So she'll also be answering as we go through. So without further ado, I want to tell you all that you are doing a great job participation wise. We love the feedback. We're taking it seriously. We're making adjustments on the fly. Um, and we're really, really happy to have you here and hopefully we can add something to your success. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we can start seeing my PowerPoint presentation. So one of the things we wanna talk about when we talk about um, any product that we're gonna be starting is profitability. And let's see, why do we want to have bags? I mean, why, like what's the point? And so here's some, just some fun facts so bags generate the most impression of every of any product with nearly 6,000 um, impressions over the lifetime of the bag. And that's from promotional marketing. And so when we're talking about promotional products, um, that really is how many times someone sees it. And so 6,000 is quite extensive for a bag. Um, and, and Stefan will give you some really great things. And, you know, bags are personal. So people utilize them. They're utilitarian. We're carrying them out in the marketplace. So it makes perfect sense. One of the other very important things to know is that when you talk about um, cost of that, if you look at a cost of an impression, it's one of the lowest cost per impression products that you can get. And that's from a Sage blog, but it's one tenth of a cent is the cost per impression that a bag will generate. So these are just some things to help you get going as to why would I want to be offering bags? Because in the promo space, it's definitely something that we're seeing trending and people are really loving them. So um, we're going to talk about profitability more at the end, but I'm going to turn it over to Stefan from s and and he's going to talk to us about bags and trends. Awesome. Um, yes. And then we got this. I'm just switching over screens here. Hopefully everybody sees that. Um, hold on. Let me just swap this. Excellent. We're good. <clears throat> Fantastic. So today, thank you guys for, for joining us and thank you for having s, s participate. We're really happy to uh, partner up with Stalls. So today I wanted to talk about bag trends and uh, the biggest bag trend overall that we've seen in the last three years, and it continued through 2020, um, was that you have choices. You have premium choices, you have price point choices, but the bag category continues to grow. And then what we featured at s, s is premium brands. So, you know, uh, Allison touched on it. Um, bags are personal. 
So what we've done and our, our sales division has done is gone out and meet with distributors, find out the persona of the end user and start matching brands. So find the individual that uh, Adidas resonates with, Oakley, Puma, Columbia, Champion. And so, as I mentioned earlier, you know, bags are alive and well. We thought, um, because most people associate bags with travel nationwide, right? So travel got shut down during 2020. Well, our industry is so resilient, we started shifting and we went into promotional bags first after March and started using those as bundling items, bundling a price point t-shirt with headwear and then using the promotional bags. As we started getting into June and people started realizing, I need to get outside. All of a sudden, a whole outdoor um, division started, you know, opening up to us because people wanted to get out. Companies were still buying the, the backpacks because you're a walking unit, right? You have everything. Then we saw a surge in the smaller bags, right? So smaller bags like the fanny packs, hip bags, utility pouches, sling bags, because people were on the go. They had their hand sanitizer. They needed, you know, mask storage. Um, but bundling continued all the way through. I mean, it's happening today. We just put a deal together. But let's think about also where the backpack has evolved. Yes, it's the number one travel gear item, but it's also now converted into a commuter bag. People are working from home, but now offices have opened up. And so there's designated office days. But what you bring into the office, you're now taking home because you need that stuff. So we saw, we beat our numbers from 2019, which was a great year um, in 2020, because people started getting used to packing up and being on the go and working from their car. I mean, so, you know, and I mentioned the great outdoors, that's another trend. A lot of offices are putting teams together where they go out on walks and they're so they're distant, but they're outside and it's just refreshing. Um, we saw another great trend in healthcare and the essential workforce because they were carrying a little bit more extra equipment, right, with them to go to and from work. So the lockers that used to exist and the locker rooms at offices to get changed in, they were coming out of backpacks because people are holding on to things tight. So that's another avenue. Workout, fitness. Um, uh, a lot of people started getting back into that. A lot of fitness centers are moving their venues in the Sun Belt, of course. I know we're in winter, uh, but moving into um, outside venues. So, and then incentives. Incentives are always uh, top uh, to build morale, to issue a new travel item, whether it's a duffel or a backpack. So that still exists because people are, companies are getting together and building hope that yes, we're going to be back out there. So let's be prepared. Um, top styles still uh, coming out of s and the promotional tote arena. So, you know, we have a wide variety there, 100% cotton totes. Again, goes back to what are you going to bundle items in? So um, backpacks, are on fire for us. And then the, the cinch, gym sacks. Um, a lot of the younger generation, the Gen Z's entering the workforce, they just like to pack and go. They need their phone, their charger, and maybe you know their iPad, right? So some of the cinch packs are ideal. And then duffels. So um, keep that in mind. So I wanted to just quickly do kind of a review on how the industry has evolved in having choices and choices are brands that are out there that meet the persona of the individual. So building a bag program, we look at the target markets of that brand. So when you look at Adidas, for instance, Adidas has a goal of being 100% recycled polyester in all of their items by 2024. 
So they're already introducing recycled product. Find the companies that are looking for a sustainable message and products and start matching the apparel that is available out there. Um, follow the sponsorships when you wanna sell in a brand. So Adidas, for instance, Olympic sponsor, who do they sponsor uh, as an athlete, right? So for instance, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes is everything there. MVP, Super Bowl champion. He's not only an Adidas sponsored athlete, but an Oakley. So in find that athlete in the city that you reside in. And, you know, it gives you that little edge and something to talk about. It's a touch point. So, um, you know, everything uh, is on field, off field use, you know, the executive marketplace, they love brands. So um, let's move into some of the options you have here. What, the way we build a bag program is we start with the entry price point. It's a great way to introduce your end user into a brand because they may be nervous. They automatically think, oh, Adidas is going to be too expensive. Research, we can help you with that and, and enter with the price point. First, add a hat, add the price point apparel piece from the same brand and give them, again, choice. So we added shoe bags this year. And yes, it's listed as a shoe bag. It's become a utility bag. Um, we have people that uh, put all sorts of their cycling cleats when they go out, the tie down to keep the bike in the back, uh, power cords. I mean, it's not just a shoe bag. So bags offer you, you know, expand the purpose of the bag. So again, all the backpacks, this is all in the files that you can download. So we'll share that. But I touched on earlier is, you know, if you wanna push a bag, start introducing the apparel around it too, because people love to say, okay, I'm gonna start with the backpack. And then the feedback comes in from the employee going, wow, I've got an Adidas backpack. What else can we do with Adidas? And then have that in your arsenal to start building that program out. Um, we, you know, we build full sets that you can start building in. Columbia, another great brand. Again, looking at the target market, you're looking at active outdoor lifestyle. This has been huge this year because we all did our kind of lockdown, right? And we want to get out. So um, know that you have that. Columbia is a great brand and they brought in four new retail styling bags that meets all sorts of demographics. Starts with the sling bag, goes into full on hiking backpack. So you have choice. Oakley, another great brand. Let's look at that target market, right? How can you get started in the Oakley brand? You know, they're a worldwide global sports performance brand. Everybody knows Oakley eyewear, but they don't realize how big Oakley frames are for prescription. It's a $250 million business just in the US. So executives are wearing the frames. Oakley is out there and you can introduce that name. Again, following their partnerships, they have huge military affiliation. They are US standard issue and eyewear to the military. And they have programs that military families, veterans and service members can log into and buy at a members only kind of cost. Oakley's making big moves, NFL, um, all the eye shields out there. So the name is very popular, motorsports. So the list goes on, um, but you know, unique lifestyle approaches. Here you have a travel pouch, it can be used as a snack bag, it can be a toiletry kit, it can hold all your cords and you can fit it in any of the bags, but lots of different colorways. We have camo. We kind of have some of this mil military looking stuff that really resonates with, you know, different demographics. And then Oakley brings us high-end business backpacks as well. So partnering it with apparel really sells the program. 
And Oakley isn't just a, you know, it doesn't just skew male. You can add female components to it. So, you know, brighten it up. Champion and Puma, these are two arenas that really go after that millennial Gen Z. They're premium retail. Um, I'm a little bit older, so Champion and Puma have a different set in my, you know, history. But for this newer generation, this is street cred. This is popular. This is mainstream. It's the music industry. Um, they're in the esports. So, you know, it's a lot of different matches you can make. Um, and here are some of the choices here. So that's what I have um, today. But, you know, I just want to leave uh, you with start, you know, to get familiar with bag. We have incredible price point options and start adding to it. And as you introduce what's available, that's the key thing thing because most of our end users out there don't realize they now can tap into the retail marketplace. So um, please download the files and I'll turn it back over to Allison. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Steph. And that was really great information. And I totally resonate with the champion and the Puma comment that you made. I have a 16 year old daughter and she's so into champion and Puma. And that was not where I was when I was 16. That was like, yeah. Yeah. So I totally get that, but yeah. um, we're going to move on. Stacy, do you, we have any questions for Stefan um, SNS? Really? Yes. Yep. We actually do have um, a few questions pertaining to the slides that were just shown. Yeah. Um, one customer wanted to know what size laptop will fit into the backpack. So we make it a standard. So we started it up to a 15 inch. And then on our website, it'll list some of the larger bags that can accommodate a 17 inch. But let's say you take Oakley, for instance, they not only have a tablet sleeve, but then another laptop sleeve that fits up to 15 inches. That is um, kind of the industry standard that we go out to market with. But there are some bags that can accommodate up to 17. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then somebody had tuned in with us a little bit later. Can you just um, explain again for the pricing that you had on your slides, was that the retail price or the pricing for customers with us? Yeah, that is set at uh, MSRP. So that's okay. on, that was built on an A. So. Perfect, thank you. And I think we are good if you want to continue on. Awesome. awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen correctly this time and go back to a PowerPoint. Um, let me know if you can't see it. Um, I am going to specifically go through a couple of slides um, related to decorating bags, and then we're going to move right into heat application. The um, deck that I'm using is a little bit um, organized differently than the one that you'll download because I kept the slides together where we talk about the products and the profitability. But for demonstration purposes, I broke them apart so we can do all the heat application at a time. And if we don't get to the profitability slides because we run out of time, you can read that information because it's all there for you. So you'll have it. Um, but some things that we want to touch on when you're talking about decorating bags and Stefan touched on this, you know, in the very beginning, know your customer. You need to know what your customer wants. What's the purpose or the goal for the bag? Is it utilitarian? Is it personal? Is it appreciation? Is it promo? Is it going to be one of those canvas or polypropylene totes that's just taken away and it's promo? So it's really important to know that's going to help you dial in what type of decoration the customer's looking for. Are we looking for an economical answer? Are we looking for something a little bit more high end? Even so far as what can you sell them or what can you present to them? Does brand matter? We just took away from this presentation, brand does matter. Not to everybody, but to a lot of people, brand does matter. So find out, do they have a specific brand that they're looking for? Um, you know, are they military affiliate? Is Oakley gonna resonate with them or Champion or Puma? You know, those are types of questions to ask your customer. And then branding. 
Do they want multiple spot locations? Is it going to be personalization? Talk about exposure. Is it going to be exposed to outdoor? Like we said, are they going to be, you know, doing some outdoor things? Is it going to be indoor in a pool, um, a locker room, that sort of thing? So these are all great questions to ask. And then number four, do they have a specific band in bag in mind. Um, and that's just important because why go through the, the paces of selling them a bag if they already have something specific that they're looking for? Hone into that, get to that point first. Next, we're gonna talk about decoration options and what you need to know. And in the file section, we have a what to use when grid that you can download that will really help you. And some of the things um, that we're gonna talk about here relate to that. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because it's all in that um, tool that you're gonna utilize, which you're gonna love. People absolutely love it. But we really wanna know when we're presenting a decorating method to a customer, what what are these three key factors? Substrate, is it cotton, poly, nylon? Does it have a waterproof coating on it? All of those are gonna be very important to try to figure out what heat printing products are going to be compatible. So what's gonna work for you? What's gonna heat apply? What are you gonna have success with? That's number one. Number two, how many colors is it? Is it a single color design? Is it you know 16.9 billion colors with gradients and shadings and all kind of really amazing effects? That's going to make a difference as to what service product or what offer you go with. If we go with a digital transfer, if we go with a spot color transfer, if we go with a heat transfer vinyl, those are all things that we're going to want to know and those are going to relate to color. So one is substrate, two is color, and three is quantity. Again, this is going to help you narrow down that pathway of which product is going to be best suited for the application. If they want five, we might go with a heat transfer vinyl or a digital transfer. If they want, you know, a thousand, we might start considering a, a screen printed transfer, Aquatru or some of our hybrid methods. So these are all definitely things. And then one other thing to consider is special effects. Does the customer want special effects? Special effects, when we talk about them, metallics, glitters, dimensional emblems, embroidery, leather, all of those, those are again, high end effects that you can achieve and they may be something that the customer's looking for. That will skip over all of this and get you right into what kind of product that they're thinking about. So those are some things to keep in mind. Okay, so oops, sorry, I skipped one. So now we're gonna talk about the products that we're gonna decorate. We are not decorating a polypropylene bag but we're going to talk about if you were decorating a polypropylene bag, what would you use and why? So we recommend for heat transfer vinyl, HTV, which is going to be your single, maybe single color, two color, um, possibly low quantity option. Um, it's going to be great because it goes on at a low temp and it has a super, super soft application once it's applied. Low temperature is really, really, really important with polypropylene. Polypropylene is made out of recycled plastic. Um, it makes it very economical, especially for promotional giveaway bags. But because of that, it's going to be very heat sensitive and you will get a scorch mark or some melting. So we really want to do something that can go on at the lowest temperature possible. And Ultra Weed has that option. If you have a full color project, something that has a lot of color, you know, three or more colors, we would recommend the Super Tech Opaque. It has full color opacity, so you're not gonna have to worry about any dye migration. And it goes on again at a low temperature. So you're not gonna have to worry about melting or scorching the bag. And again, these are both gonna be economical solutions because we wanna use an economical solution on an economical bag. It would not make sense for us to put a high-end decoration on a product that we're just gonna give away. So next we're gonna talk about backpacks and specifically hone in on, you know, Oakley. The backpack that we're going to apply is an Oakley backpack. Um, provided to us by s and and this is the show and sell. If you purchase the kit and you have the backpack to go along, this is what um, I'm going to heat apply and show you how I would heat apply it. 
Um, we have different options that you can recommend. Again, Oakley is known as a high-end brand. So you can definitely recommend or um, pitch to your customer some high-end finishes. So flex style by stalls, um, custom emblems, leather, embroidery patches. These are all really, really, really great options for heat printing onto an Oakley backpack. Um, the dimensional emblems we would recommend using lower heat with, which is perfect because they are a little heat sensitive. So by using the lower heat, we can reduce the top heat as well. And so we don't have to worry about scorching. What we're gonna heat apply today is a CAD prints textured twill. It's a full color transfer printed on a woven fabric. So it gives a high-end look, a high-end finish. It looks woven, doesn't have any marrowed edges or stitches around it, but it has a really full color, really nice texture in it. And um, you know, it's a little more economical and has a pretty quick turn time related to, you know, if you get into textured emblems. So I'm not gonna heat apply that right now. I'm gonna talk about the other few bags and then I'm gonna heat apply them all together so we can spend some good time there. The next bag that we are gonna heat apply is a cinch sack. And again, these are really hitting and honing in on the trends that we're seeing right now. So again, the Gen Z, the Gen Xers that wanna just grab and go, they're gonna be grabbing for a cinch sack. And we're gonna be heat printing a new era cinch sack. And it is this red, really bright, vibrant red one. Again, this is gonna be something a little heat sensitive because these, this was probably sublimated. We wanna make sure that we don't have any opacity issues here. Um, but for single color solutions, we would recommend um, Gorilla Grip 2 because this is a nylon, um, this bag. It has a thin soft hand and again, a low temperature application. We're not gonna have to worry about any dye migration here. For full color solution, which is what we are going to do today, we are going to do a SuperTech Sublistop, which is in the same family as that SuperTech Opeg we recommended for polypropylene. So it goes on at a low temp, has a full color capacity. So you can do gradients and shadings, many colors. It's a full color digital product. It goes on at a low temperature. I think I said that already, but I'm gonna say it again and hit home with it. And then it has a charcoal dye blocking layer. So we're not gonna to have to worry about dye migration at all. It's gonna get um, trapped in that uh, charcoal layer. So no see-through. Your whites, even on this red bag, will not be pink. They will be white. So that's the application that we're gonna do here. And last application, we're going to do a boutique market. And this is a buffalo plaid tote. Very, very, very trendy. Um, you know, you'll see tons of stuff like this on Etsy and all different kinds of things. Very personalized. These are very, very personalized and boutique. -y. Again, a high end finish that you could recommend. Um, single color would be a leather patch. Leather patches come in a variety of colors. They give a little dimension. They have some etching to them. They give that vintage effect and that rich feel to them. People are really, really loving the leather right now and it's trending in a variety of different things, but we're definitely seeing it in bags. Um, and I encourage you to try them because it really does give that, that definite one up look. But in, uh, we're going to do a metallic. So we're going to do a gold metallic monogram, which again ties really into the um, one off or the personalization trend that we're seeing with these types of bags. It gives it a chrome effect. It um, has a thin, it's really thin, and it's a foil look without a two step application. So it'll be a single step application, really easy. And it goes on again at a low temperature. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into some heat application. Um, so the first one that we're gonna do is the Oakley bag. So let me grab it. All right, and we're gonna talk about a few different things here. So we've got this perma twill design that I told you about, the texture twill that got that texture and gradient. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can see me full scale, is that better? Yeah. Okay. So you've got this full texture um, application that we have here. Okay. It's got some texture. It's got some gradients. That's what we're going to be heat applying. And we have this really awesome Oakley backpack that has lots of zippers. 
with that nice, you know, laptop sleeve that we talked about. And then we've got pockets. Okay. We always, when we're heat printing on bags, it is that one product that we really want to make sure that we try to get nice, even pressure. And um, we want to avoid seams and zippers if at all possible. So as much as I would love to use an interchangeable platen on this, it's proving a little difficult because we're going to put this um, patch on this front pocket. Because if you're going to carry around a bag, you know, wherever we're going with the brand on it, we want it to be on that outside pocket facing outwards, okay? So we're going to employ one of our heat print pads. And this heat printing pad is the very similar to the silicone bottom of your heat press. It gives you a very nice raised smooth surface that's firm to do heat printing onto. And this pad is going to fit perfectly inside of the pocket of the bag. So I'm going to pull out my, I'm using a fusion. I'm going to pull out my fusion drawer so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better on screen. Just going to put my craft paper over here. I'm going to put my bag up here and I'm going to slide this print perfect pad into this pocket. Okay. And again, I really, you can see now I've got it inside the pocket. It gives me a nice smooth surface, something to work with. Okay, and I'm gonna try to get this bag flat. Now, whenever we heat print something, the heat printing recipe is time, temperature, pressure, okay? So CAD prints, texture twill goes on from 260 to 300 degrees. We got a nice big window, 12 seconds, and we have a medium pressure. Medium pressure is gonna be very different with this thick bag on here and this print perfect pad inside. So every single time we change, we're going to adjust our pressure. So I already know I'm gonna to have to back this off a little bit. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna back this off and make it you know, pretty light, make sure I get this down as good as possible. And then I'm gonna put my craft paper cover sheet over my backpack and I'm gonna slide it in. And actually this works better if we do this this way. All right, so let's try this here. All right, and I'm gonna lock this in place and just try to see, you know, this is a little, a little thicker than the last time. Let me see if I can get, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna hybrid this. Now I'm really gonna, I think this is what I did before, sorry. I'm gonna switch off this 16 by 20 platen and I'm gonna put on a smaller one. I have an 11 by 15 that I think is gonna fit better. And then I can dress the platen. And I'm still gonna use the Print Perfect pad because I still need to avoid those seams and zipper. Let's try this. Yeah, there we go. So way better. Now I've got it nice and smooth. So I'm gonna get it on this 11 by 15 platen so I can dress it and it's not so thick. And I still have my Print Perfect pad inside of there. Sorry, I dropped my craft paper. So I'm gonna put this on top of here now and slide this back in and see we're doing way better. All right, so now let's test the pressure. We want it to be medium, which is about a four to five. So I went, I went way low in anticipation. And then a three, a little bit higher. There we go, perfect. Now I'm gonna adjust my time because I have it at five seconds and I need it at 20. 12, sorry. There you go. All right, pretty close. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna pull this back out. I'm going to place my transfer on my bag. Hopefully I center it. I think I will. I have faith. I'm going to use this re uh, these throwaway cover sheet that comes with the transfers because sometimes the print on the um, permatwill will actually transfer onto your cover sheet. And if you keep using the same sheet over and over again, it's going to go on the next bag and the next bag and the next bag. So use this one. And then I'm still going to cover it with my craft paper just to cover the bag and protect that. And then I'm going to push it in. We're going to do... 
So 12 seconds. And then there's no carrier on here. So I don't have anything to peel when I'm done with the heat application. It's literally heat press and go. So we should be good when this pops up. All right, take off my cover sheets here. You guys weren't watching, I would just throw it and be like the Mad Hatter. I make a big mess everywhere, but I think I better behave. All right, so I'm gonna take this off of here and voila, we have a very nice textured emblem. This gives it a nice texture, that really great shine, high end, pretty centered on the bag. I'm getting a thumbs up from Stefan, so that looks good. And this is a nice, nice bag that we can go ahead. All right, you can see the profitability on there, the item number, what we're talking about. Um, we'll revisit that in a few minutes um, if we get to it. Just wanna make sure that you get that. So, I mean, Oakley, high-end brand, nice backpack. I don't know, I mean, we have a wholesale price on here of 55 to 65. Do we think that we could get that for, you know, a bag decorated, personalized? I think so. So, all right, next, let's decorate. Oops in the wrong way. We're going to decorate the cinch sack. And so I already have my 11 by 15 platen on here, which is awesome. So that's going to make my job a little bit easier here. We're going to be doing the uh, super tech sublistop, stop, which goes on at 280 to 300 degrees. And it's a five second tack. And then we're going to peel the carrier. And then it's a five second application. So let me grab that. And so here's the new era cinch that we were talking about. I'm going to go ahead and dress this platen again. I'm using the 11 by 15. If you don't have interchangeable platens, you could use print perfect pads. You can use pillows, whatever tools that you have available to you. Um, I have the um, interchangeable platens, so I'm going to utilize them. And they are really going to be lifesavers when you talk about production. When you're doing multiple um, bags, this is definitely going to make your life a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Like I said before, we're always going to preheat a variety of reasons. First of all, we want to check the pressure. Always a good thing to check pressure. We want to remove any chemical sizing or anything that could be in the um, product that they use when they manufacture it. We want to make sure we get wrinkles out. I don't know, anytime I take a jacket or a t-shirt out of a box that gets shipped to me from a supplier, it has wrinkles, it has fold marks in it. So we want to start with a nice even surface. We're going to use the cover sheet. We're going to do five second preheat, which is telling me my pressure is way too low because again, I had a backpack on there before and a print perfect pad. So I had some elevation there. So I'm gonna pull this down. I went a, I went a little high, Popeyes over here today. All right, there we go. Perfect. I'm gonna pull that out and then we're gonna go with our, this is a great, the full color, you can see we got some gradients and some shadings in there. A full color, it's gonna lend itself really nice. Comes on a paper carrier, so they don't stick together in the box. So I'm gonna remove that slowly. You can see that charcoal layer I was telling you about. The adhesive side is solid black. So I'm gonna place this on my bag. Again, I'm trusting I'm gonna center it. I wanna make sure I get that top seam off of the platen so I have a nice smooth surface. I'm gonna use my cover sheet, cover it up again. And sublist up is a five second tack. Then you peel the carrier warm and then you do another five seconds. So I had the time set for 14. So I'm gonna pop it at nine. It's a nice thing about the fusion. You can just stop when you need to. And then we're gonna peel this. Look at that. Butter. This is trash, throw it away, unless you need it to use to get the lint off of your pants. It works really good for that. Use everything, right? All right, let's have slide it back in. We'll do another five seconds with the cover sheet. Magic number is nine. Pull this out. 
and we are good to go. And here we have that nice new era cinch that we talked about, full color. We still have white lettering, it's not pink, so that's awesome. We don't have that dye migration. We've got another trendy bag that we decorated. Woohoo! we're cruising. All right, lastly, we are going to do the metallic in the Buffalo plaid tote. Um, and this is a really nice tote. It's big, it's a really big tote. I love how big it is. It's nice and big and roomy. Can fit a weekend in here, I would say. Um, and uh, we're gonna do a monogram in metallic. And again, it's got a paper carrier on it, but you can see that nice high chrome gold metallic, right? And we're gonna heat print that right in between the handles. Um, one of these sides of this bag has a pocket with a zipper inside. It's not the side we're gonna heat apply to. We're gonna do the opposite side, again, just to make sure that we get a nice, smooth, even surface. I think this 11 by 15 will work, let's see. Nope. I'm going to switch to the six by 10, which is super easy. Set that down. I'm going to do my quick change plan here. Pop it off. There's that pin registration that we always talk about. And I'm going to grab my smaller six by 10. Again, really great for avoiding button seam zippers. Pop that in, lock it in place. I'm also going to push this in and I'm going to use the fusion in um, swing in swing mode instead of the drawer. And the reason I'm doing that is because these handles on this tote are getting caught up when I slide it in and out. So that's the other nice thing about the fusion press. Okay. We've got it in here. Again, what's the first thing I'm going to do? We're going to check the pressure. So we're going to put the cover sheet back on, pull this over. We're going to lock it in place. We're at a three. So the metallic is 285 degrees for eight to 10 seconds on a medium pressure. So I'm a little low on temp. I'm going to bump it up. It should go. I'm only five degrees off. Should be good. Okay. I'm going to swing this away. I'm going to place my design in the side of my handles, like I talked about. Center it up. Make sure that seam is off the back of that platen. Use my cover sheet to protect my platen and my bag. Bring it back, I'm gonna lock it in place. I have this set for 14 seconds. I said eight to 10, so I'll pop it when it's at four. And then I'll pull it out now because you can see it better. Pull it out. And then I don't remember. Yeah, it's a cool peel. It's a good test, go slow until you know. So I'm just gonna push this on here. The bottom of the, the rail on the Fusion is nice. It's metal, it's cold, so it'll wick away the heat pretty quickly. And then I can go ahead and peel it. Um, we talked about, I said we're gonna talk about profitability a little bit. You can see it on all of the slides that we talked about, um, what you know we feel without any overhead included, what we feel that you can make profitability wise for each one of these bags. And what I really want you to think about when we think about profitability is what is it gonna cost me to pay off my machine? And I tried really hard to give you some scenarios that would work. And like the Oakley bag, for instance, at the margin that we're looking at getting profitability margin, we are talking about this fusion, the package, the show special package is $2,500. So let's say you were only going to sell bags and you needed to sell enough, right? To pay off this machine, that was your goal. It really isn't that much if you go back to the Oakley bag and you look at um, what profit we're making, sorry, $20 profit a bag. 
So we're looking at, you know, 125 bags, basically, if you think about it, for that specific bag to pay off that machine. Other ones are going to be, you know, higher more if you're not getting as much profit. But let's think about who is going to buy that Oakley bag. So the Oakley bag, again, is going to be a high-end decoration. I really would see that in something like um, employee appreciation or kit, some of the things that Stefan was talking about. So how many businesses do you know out there that have 30 sales reps that are going out into the market every day that are going to want branding? Can you find five of them? I mean, can you find five of those that have, that's 125 bags. If you find five companies that have 25 salespeople that you can sell a high-end bag to. So I just want you to start thinking about some of those types of things so that you can understand where the profitability is and, and what um, how you can pay off that equipment if you don't already have it and you're looking to get into some of that. So that's really what I wanted to touch on with profitability. And then this feels pretty cold. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a peel. You see that carrier again, lint roller, or here we go. We've got this nice blingy, again, definitely subtle, but a little pop, that boutique-y look. You see this on Etsy all day long. So, all right. So we did some really, really great things with heat application and talking about bag trends. I have a few things to wrap up. Um, and then we'll take some questions. We talked about um, tips and tools. We talked about the heat press pad. We did interchangeable platens. Flexible application pad is um, an option to help insulate products when we're worried about um, melting button seams or zippers. So this is a really handy dandy tool. I did not need to use it, um, but you could use it to help insulate. If you do employ using a flexible application pad, we wanna make sure that we increase our dwell time. So don't increase your temperature, but this is thicker. So we're gonna need to give it a little bit more time for the heat to penetrate through the application. So, um, and then pillows. Pillows is a good, um, a good, substitution for a heat press pad. So pillows are, um, they have a foam insert and then they have a, um, sorry, a, a non-stick coating on the outside that's stitched inside of there. And the difference between pads and pillows and when to use them is, you know, pretty simple. Pillows cannot be customized sized because they're stitched all around. So the size is the size. Heat press pads can be. So you can cut them down to fit them into small pockets and small shapes and sizes when you need to. But heat press pads, you're always gonna wanna do use when you're heat printing something that's on a paper carrier. So if you're using any Transfer Express products, you wanna use a heat press pad versus a pillow because they need that nice firm surface to do some heat printing on. Pillows are great for, um, you know, if you're doing HTV and you have button seams, zippers, button downs, that's when pillow works really, really good. Okay. And then lastly, I just want to share with you my pick. If you're looking to get into bags or any application, this is the show special that we have. And this is what I was alluding to with the $2,500. It's the Fusion IQ with some interchangeable platens and all the accessories that you need to get started. So if you haven't checked out the event specials, please, please make sure that you do because there's a lot of things on there um, that you can take advantage of all different kinds of things. So we encourage you to do that. If you have questions or you need more help trying to decide, set up a personal meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one of our experts. They can answer all of your questions and they can help, you know, guide you into the right path and what's going to fit your business. We'll talk to you about what your objectives are, long-term goals, that sort of thing. We can definitely help get you started there. So, Stacy, I'm going to ask you if we have any questions that I can answer. I am looking through right now. Um, a lot of them have been answered in the chat, so I'm just seeing if there's any additional questions coming in. Um, Jackie wants to know, she said, from what she's hearing, avoid goof proof due to high heat for bags using goof proof. <laughs> So goof proof is great for um, when Stefan was talking in the very beginning about um, promotional totes. So canvas promotional totes, 
Goof proof is going to be amazing because it doesn't matter um, as far as they're not going to be heat sensitive and they're going to be economical. So it's going to be an economic uh, decoration option on an econ economical tote when you're going to be giving it away. If you're getting into some of the um, polyester bags, nylon bags, you know, some of those higher end, those are going to be heat sensitive and you're not going to want to use goof proof on those because it goes on at 365 degrees. So you, you'll have a little bit of trouble there. So you really need to look at the substrate of the bag to make that decision. And you said too, in the files tab, I believe you guys included the um, compatibility charts in there too. I did. Yep. So that can all be found in there. Yes. Uh, the Perfect. fabric compatibility is in there. Um, the deck, there's a downloadable dimensional and emblems because we didn't heat apply any of those, but we did allude to them. So um, some of that information is in there. Um, I think that's, that's, oh, and then the, the what to use when, which again is worth its weight in gold. You probably will get it from eight different presenters for eight different sessions because it's, it's that helpful to everybody and it's such a great tool. Um, any other questions? I think most of them have been answered. Um, Stephanie wanted to know when to use the pad again. I believe she's referring to the flexible application pad. So the flexible application pad, you're gonna want to use when you're heat printing anything that's heat sensitive and you can't, um, you can't employ lower heat and you can't get, a, let's say a plastic zipper. We can't get a plastic zipper off of the platen. So it's going to be under the heat, which means it's probably going to melt or warp a little bit. And no one wants a hoodie or a bag with a zipper that won't zip or unzip. That doesn't make any sense. Once you melt it, you're done. So that's when a great option to use the flexible application pad um, to kind of insulate those products so that we don't melt anything. And then it looks like we just have a question coming in um, regarding SNS. It says for SNS, when are you guys going to get your stock your stock restocked? So it looks like maybe there are some low items they were looking for. Do you have any options for them, I mean, Stefan? We're, we're constantly restocking. If they want to uh, use my email, I can look into it deeper. Um, I believe Allison has it at the end of the presentation. And so feel free to email me um, and, and we can dig in deeper. But, you know, like the Oakley backpack, I was going to throw out there when she was talking about paying off the machine. I mean, that's in full stock, that one. And so, um, you know, we're ready to go. Um, so, yeah, let's let's tackle that one on one. I'd love it. Yep. And there's the contact information for everybody there. Stefan's email as well as mine. Please reach out to us. We are happy to answer any questions that you have and help you in any way. Um, there We have jam-packed sessions if you haven't gone to some of them. Um, last night, I attended Josh's um, presentation on pr pricing and learned a ton and the feedback was amazing. So if you didn't get to attend that one last night, I think it was at nine Eastern Standard Time. I believe it's repeating again tonight at nine. That's a really great one, especially for any startups or anyone that's just getting in, or even if you just have questions, like there's some really great tools and logic there. And if you can't get to that one in person, definitely watch the video of it. Because again, I learned a lot and uh, it's definitely a really great, um, presentation. It's done really well. It's really well thought out. So I was really impressed. I've been impressed with all of them, but th this one really hit with me. Especially at nine o'clock last night, I was like, what can I do? Oh, here we go. This, this is great. So I would really love to thank everyone for hanging out with us today and joining us. I think all of your questions and your feedback is great. Keep it coming. We really hope that you get some, you know, really great things to take away from here. And thank you, Stefan, for joining us and Stacy oh, for moderating. You. And everyone have an amazing day.